Now, one of the next things we need to know before we get into transformer connections is the polarity. When we drew out a vector on our high side system, that vector represented polarity. So we have to maintain proper polarity when we make our transformer connections when we go from the high to the low side. Now, if I have a, a transformer, and I'll draw a single phase transformer here, and I have a high side and a low side. Let's just use a two bushings to, to start with. Uh, the identification of the terminals identify the polarity of that transformer. In other words, the position of those terminals determine the direction of the current flow from the high to the low side at any given instant of time. Now we need to know that when we make up our transformer connections. We need to know the direction of the current flow. We can simplify it just by identifying the transformer terminals. And if I have two transformers, and we'll use two bushings on either side of both of these transformers, To identify the high and the low side, we'll use H for the high side and X for the low side. Now, we identify our transformers for additive and subtractive polarity. The difference in the two is going to be the position of the terminals on the low side. Now, if I have a subtractive transformer, we'll identify the terminals for this one. If I have a subtractive transformer here, then my H1 terminal will be on this side, my H2 over there. If this is an additive transformer over here, my transformer terminals on the high side are going to be the same. Now, in this particular transformer, our subtractive transformer, the terminals are going to be such, now I've got two terminal down here, that would mean then that I would have X1 here and X2 over here. On the additive, I would have my X1 over here and my X2 over here on this side. Now, the vector arrows that we use will be indicated by low number to high number, low number to high number. If I draw, if I draw a vector for a transformer and this represents the high side, then this would be the low, this would be the high terminal. And same way with, with, uh, with the low side. Now, if, if uh, I represent the low side, I'm going to have a terminal down here. It's going to look like this. If my vector arrow is in that direction, then my X1 is over here and my X2 is over here. In other words, those vectors will determine what the polarity will be, or I can draw the vector arrow to represent that polarity. Uh, over here, you see, we've got our additive in the reverse direction. Now, when we determine to calculate out what the polarity would be on a transformer, we can do that through a test. In other words, I can make an auto transformer out of that. First thing I'm going to have to do is make sure I ground the tank. And then what I'll do is tie the two same side terminals together on one side. And then what I'll do is apply a low voltage on the high voltage side, and that's important to remember that. I'll put 120 volt, for example, on the high side. And then what I'll do is I'll take a voltmeter. Remember, voltage you're always measuring across the circuit. I'll take a voltmeter over here, and I'll tie across that transformer. Now, if I had a 10 to 1 transformer ratio, let's say my voltage ratio was 10 to 1. 
if I put 120 volt up here, then the induced voltage on a mutual inductance transformer now would be just 12 volts down here on this side. But I'm making an auto transformer out of that. So that means then that over on the other side, if it's, if it's uh, subtractive like this one would be, then that I'm going to have 12 volts less than that. In other words, I should get over here 108 volt by a test, you see. I'm applying low voltage on the high voltage side, making an auto transformer out of it, making sure that tank's grounded and so on, using my gloves and so on so that, uh, you know, that uh, I'm working under safe conditions. I can actually test that and determine what the, whether it's additive or subtractive. Now, the name and data plate's going to give it to you, but I've seen where those have been wrong. Okay. Now, what we'll do here, you see, in this case, we can represent what the polarity would be by drawing the vectors out. In other words, if I had my high side diagram, well, let's just draw a vector. I'll show you by a vector. If this represents my, my uh, H1 to my H2, and I'm applying 120 volt across that, then it would look like that. Now what I'm doing down here, I'm trying, I'm tying my X1. You see, I'm tying my X1 onto my H1, so I'm actually going in the opposite direction with that thing out here like this. Now, I haven't got these to scale, but I'm tying X1 here to X2 over here. Now I know that that vector represents 12 volts. That means then that I've got subtractive situation here where I would have 108 volts, you see from one end to the other. In other words, from my H2 over here to my X2 down here, I have 108 volts. Now, if I would take a subtractive, or an additive transformer now, and do that same thing, where these two terminals are actually turned around, I would have a situation like this, where I've got, I'm going in this direction, and I've got another one out in this direction like this, which means I'm going X1 to X2, H1 to H2. I've got an additive situation. My vector's in the same direction. I'm going to add my 12 onto my 120, and I'd have 132 volt. That would mean that, that I would have a, an additive transformer. I'd have 132 volts on that. Now, the only difference you see, if I draw, of course, remember, an auto transformer is connected electrically. It's connected electrically and magnetically. And if I would draw, draw an auto transformer out, I could draw one out to look like this. And if I, uh, if I apply 120 here, and this represents 12 volts, I'll have 132 volts down here. In other words, the direction that they travel around that core, you see, will determine the voltage value that I'll have. Now, now in a mutual inductance transformer, now that's, that's where you have two separate windings on a distribution transformer. All they're doing, the, the core is designed the same way and everything, all it is is in the position that the low side terminals are coming out at. And uh, there's a standardization as to where they will come out at. Now we need to know when we, to, to diagram our transformer connections, we don't particularly have to, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have to know whether it's additive or subtractive polarity, but when we come to draw it out on the transformers themselves, then we need to know which terminal is X1, which is X2, X3, and so on. Um, when we, there's a standardization for that, and the two parameters that we use are 9,000 volt and 200 kVA. In other words, this is the rating, this is a capacity, and this is a coil voltage on the high side. Now those, you don't have to worry about these values being inclusive because there is no such thing as a 9,000 volt transformer or a 200 kVA transformer. Now, NEMA standard states that the, to be additive in polarity, the transformer has to be below 9,000 volt for a coil voltage and below 200 kVA. So all your smaller transformers, 
as far as capacity and and uh, and coil voltages are going to be are going to be additive. Now, either one or the other above will make it subtractive. So that I could have a coil voltage above and uh, a rating below and it'll still be subtractive or I could have a, a KVA above and, and a voltage below it'll still be subtractive. So th that you have to know before you you can make your transformer connections. <laughs>